welcome back. Another Friday. It is August 16th. The end of summer is near. Football season is starting, sort of. Everyone's getting back to school. The elections are heating up. And I'm sure business will just start taking off till the end of the year. This is going to be great. How's it going, Art? Doing well. How about you, Greg? Jolly as hell. And we've got another special guest here, Joe. Joe is a friend of ours from a long time ago. Joe is at with Rico. What what are you doing? You're handling the uh, the dealers down south, right, Joe? Yeah, Greg. I got uh, glad to be here. I got uh, 14 dealers in the southeast. With Rico, four years, four years in their Rico, primarily Rico. Cool. All right, well, great. We're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff this week. Um, sales, obviously. Art, what's new in the world of copiers? Anything, anything happening that uh, rocks your world? Um, from last week, yeah, not much. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, you know, if we if we're going to talk about sales, um, for for me personally, non-existent. August so far has been terrible. Oh, but um, you know, like I said, the first six months of the year was uh, was uh, you know. 150 over plan so sometimes you got to pay back yeah. right in order to move forward and that's so basically august has been uh just a, a month of prospecting for me i've been able to dedicate the entire month to uh you know getting out there and trying to find uh new deals net new business et cetera, et cetera. and actually that's been working out pretty good with two days a week oh good 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 what what's What's the temperature there with the prospects? You're you're knocking on doors and calling using the phone a lot, I guess, right? What um, the, hard, hardly you're... using the phone, email okay, and email and knocking on doors. I can't get anywhere with the phone most times. Hmm. How how's the response been? What do you think? How's business uh, for your prospects? Uh, business seems uh, good with most of the uh, contacts I was able to speak to. You know, nobody's complaining about business being. Uh, well, it, it, let me go back a bit. There was a couple of clients that basically did state the summer was pretty slow, mm. and they were they were hoping, uh, you know, as soon as we get past the uh, of Labor Day, things are going to pick pick up. And one account in particular said, you know, he can see the writing on the wall that business is going to be better uh, come after Labor Day. Okay, that's cool. Joe, can you give us a feel for what's going on down south? How are you guys doing? Things are good. I mean, I did have, uh, you know, I'm kind of a representative of roll up. You know, I got people from Chattanooga, uh, Burger Beach, Charleston, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, from the top to the bottom. Right? So you get a little bit different mix, right? Most people guys down from them. So they're all a little bit different, different marketplace. So when you roll up my numbers, it's a reflection of what's happening. On you know, a good little spot, right? Right. Uh, June was the worst month in achievement of my plans in my career. Whoa. Yeah, you got to like those miles. Like, so there's the bottom falling out. And then July was about 100%. And August is looking, you know, okay. by group. When we're done with it at the end of the year, we'll be over 100% as we've been oh. for the last four years, right? So we came in last year at 104% of our plan, and you got to Think about this. Rico has double digit growth plan last spring. Right. So we're, we're growing at double digits. Now, that is that the whole corporation? No. You know what? My 14 leaders as a group, we've grown in double digits for four years. So I'd say, give it, and some of that's making up for pandemic, you know, and all. But even when you get past the pandemic, you know, business is strong. Uh, and I would argue those that have plans to grow and those are out in the field working hard. Good things happen for them. The guys that are not doing all those things, they're struggling. It's a tough business, right? It's not got deep. You got to work hard to make the thing. You guys were you know, back in the day, right? Back in the day, you look back, wasn't it so easy? You had exclusive products, no bills had it. Average color copier was going for 75,000 with 20 point margins to the rep and 20 point margins to the dealership. And the color cost coverage was, I don't know, 300% margins. You know, the yeah. good old days, but uh, 50% commissions. 
Yeah, I was like, you know, hey, what'd you do this month? I sold one. What'd you make? Oh, ten thousand dollars. So, right. but uh, so I'd say that I, you know, for my group, things are doing pretty well, but overall conditions are still challenging. I think in the economy uh, for businesses, there's a lot of unknowns. People are, but I would tell you the trend, even with all that growth, right? And that success. The mm -hmm. word is, businesses, organizations are hesitant to make long-term commitments. And that's a, that's a outcome of a pandemic. Like, hey, woke up, didn't now don't really need this stuff. So they're wait, they're hedged. You know, there's a lot of things coming off lease and they're keeping it. A lot of people extending their leases for 12 months, going month to month. And a lot yeah. of people are saying, hey, I think I just want to, you know, can I keep this as a used machine? A lot of used equipment being sold in the Southeast. Lots of used equipment. Kind of interesting, wow. but no, but I'd say everything is positive and only control what you can control. I got 55 salespeople that I work with there as a group doing quite well. And about 15 of them are just you know, doing superstar stuff. So. Right. I can't complain. Hey, Joe, would you say that uh, do you have a, a finger on the pulse of the volumes by any chance? He's talking about that coveted page point. Yeah. Page yeah, you, point. you don't have visibility, probably. No, you, but I got, the, I got the anecdotal from listening. Yeah, pay, here's the challenge. Hey, I'd say. I would say this. It's been going for a while since the 2008 Great Recession, right? When all the architectural construction engineering guys just quit training for like a year. Um, that was a huge hit. It did not help to have the pandemic where you send everybody home and all the major corporations and all the major cities in the United States and the world. It just took a huge hit. People woke up to, if you and I know, talked about it, that, hey, don't really need an A3 out. This needs something that does eight and a half files out. That's what we all call these 12 printers. Then we call it A4, you know, remember that one, HP 4345 from 2005. Well, so that's 2005. Well, now they woke up and says, we really don't need all this stuff. And if I do have to have something, it's just eight and a half files out. And so we saw this huge A4, you know, continue transition expediting to A4s versus A3s. And if you break down the volume off an A3 and put it on two A4s, the volume goes down per box. Per, per device, and the overall page volume really just depends on the sector you look at. We literally have Rico's tracking where certain sectors of business actually have a huge growth in their output, but then there's others that are like going away. So just, but overall, we know overall trends, overall math has been since I've been tracking since '94. You know, page output, page volume in the general office has been declining year over year for. 25 years. Right. Which has had some huge dips. And now it's like, you got to find that sector that says, we still do paper, right? Your yep. output device. Not all sectors, like we used to be everybody did paper, right? Not all over do. And I'll tell you this the smart kids that eat vertical are doing less paper. Right? A smart law firm is not printing like they used to do a right. year ago. A smart accounting firm is not printing. The smart technology advanced businesses and organizations don't print. But that just gets in that curve of the kind of company you're talking to because there, there are a lot of average companies. You know what, Joe? So in the last, and Art, you you probably back me up on this. The last few weeks, we've had a, a lot of our content has been about scanning, right? A new interest in scanners, uh, yeah. Kodak and Alaris and things like that. What do you see? I mean, you got any information, anything at all out? Well, I think it's uh, telling that, and you know, I'm off the clock. This is not Rico confidential. I'm telling you, I'm telling you what I've seen for years. Um, if you go back in time, this way, when you go back in time, there's an organization that was created called AIM. Who is that? AIM, A I I M. That's an industry association of professionals that's handing content documents. Okay. Uh, 10 years ago, it was had been in place for 80 years. So there's professionals out there that have been worried about moving documents, storing documents, archiving documents, classifying documents, anything related to documents for longer than we've had to see this. Well, that means there were the minute scanners became available, and you look at a micro condition, you went to scanners, scans were needed earlier by those people. Rico was number one in scanners in 2000, but they were branded as uh, Bell and Howell. And then as we incorporated the scanning capabilities, all of us did into the MFPs, actually bolted them on the machines, integrated into the machines, improved the scanning capabilities. 
the you know, bid market of scanning dedicated scanners kind of went away, right? And then what you've seen now, especially with COVID, and, and the trend, the trends of digitization of documentation, federal government required it uh, with HP when, when the federal government was paying medical complexes full dollar to upgrade and digitize everything. George W. Bush legislation says, you know, you go out and digitize all your medical records, we will pay, the federal government will pay 100% of the conversion. And the next year, it was like 70, then it was 50. So I remember the HP guy saying, opportunities there to get these digital senders, do whatever you gotta do, because it's paid for. All healthcare, paid for. Man, nah, nobody paid this. So what's happened is now the deadlines and the money, the free money's gone, and organizations realize, most of them, give the fans kids, I need to be have my documents digitized and accessible anywhere, anytime, uh, and secure. And so what we're seeing now is Rico goes off and says, well, let's go, let's go get the Fujitsu at PSU and get those scanners with our names on one. What's we need them? They're edge devices. But we yep. had them. We had them 25 years ago. We were number one in the market 25 years ago and they were Rico created. Now we're just Fujitsu. So there is a need. Everybody's realizing it, the smaller laggards, I've got to scan this stuff in. And, but here's the kicker. If you've got a good MFP, with a A4, A3, and somebody educates them, you've already got your scanner. At least for the last 25 years, the thing you got already scanned, you just got to use it. But we're still seeing uptick in edge devices. So I don't, it's kind of goofy, right? It's like, you know, I, I had a kid, I had a kid in the last eight years, I was like, hey, you need to scan. He looked at me and says, I got one of these. I'll just take a picture. What? I just take a picture yeah. of the image of whatever and then send it to there. So why would I scan it when I just take a picture? I'm like, that was that was eight years ago. I'm like, oh, you kind of got a point there. So it's kind of weird. It's like it's is it new? I just think people are waking up and saying, you know, maybe I need that and I don't need to print. I don't need output. I'm not gonna copy or print. I'm not gonna fax. And if we're not going to do all those things, maybe it's still get a little scan. Boom. Yeah, you know the 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 phone is good for uh, you know uh, one man business, two man business. Um, you know, I just want to. I got some paper and I just want to scan it on my phone and save it. Yeah, um, you got to you got a little more beef here as you go up the line. So we're seeing right, that. Seeing, right. especially in healthcare because whenever I walk into a healthcare office, there there's a uh, there's a standalone scanner in everybody's desk. So. <laughs> Whether it's Epson, whether it's Fujitsu, uh, whether it's uh, Kodak, um, I, I mean, as as we thought years ago, when you'd walk into an account and all of a sudden you'd see all these uh, additional A4 printers that you didn't see six months ago, uh, and they would uh, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? They would they would look like they would populate themselves and create babies in the office. To create all these different printers, I see the same thing with all the scanners now. Everybody pretty much, again, you want healthcare, especially every desk has a uh, A4 scanner on it. I mean, the biggest thing I hear when we're out there talking, right? I don't think anybody in our business has done a good job of explaining that this platform you have is a really powerful scanning. But the users think it's a cop or something. And I remember having Les Harris take me in the Gold's wagon in 2001. And the IT guy said, We're not interested in copies of printers. And I looked at him and said, You realize it's like a 45 page minute two sided scan. Because they needed that. I mean, they would hold his elevator, even though they're on the host elevator, wanted the copy, not with the copy, the print or fax. They went for the scan. Because users are more comfortable with it. Okay. So I think we just, I think, you know, single function scanner is going to be around longer than a device that prints and copies and faxes because there'll always be some legacy hard copy. You know, maybe need to flatten because you've got some books or some records or certificates that I need to get to the system because it can't stay hard copy. Every year that goes by, further and further away from hard copy storage. Okay? So uh, the other trend is people just don't even print or copy. It's digital from day one, right? Look at your restaurants, right? It's a very basic thing, but restaurants, gas stations, retail, you have to ask and beg to get a receipt, hard copy receipt. They want to PDF it to you, email it to you, text it to you. 
And so they're reducing their output where it used to be the norm, all receipts. I mean, those are expensive receipts per square inch, right? So, I, you know, I think it's just, it's just a movement of where the function is going to occur and what size device needs to do the function. Um, yeah, when you start a new business today, you try not to have any hard copy record. That's the goal. Yeah. But I love toner. I love toner. I free toner. Toner makes my world go around. So, you know, I'm really looking for the output, guys. Where is it? Greg, we're not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. See, I was wondering why you're so quiet when I say all this. Yeah. He doesn't usually agree with me. Hey, so Joe, I, I remember, uh, you know, I did, uh, I was into uh, a lot of the Rico scanners, the Rico branded scanners after they were, uh, uh, Rico had branded their own. And I had a lot of success actually with the uh, 11 by 17 scanners. Yeah. So the, they I think they were in the seven sixties. Um, sounds about right. It's a lot. It would have a. It would. I remember, have, I remember when they're out, right? I remember, but I can remember, but I can't remember, right? Um, but yeah, this, yeah, we just it's the corporations, manufacturing corporations have to make decisions based on movement of product, right? So if you see where I'm not moving enough dose to keep a facility in place, you can get back out, right? And so scanning is one of those things where we ran it and where we didn't couldn't distribute the product we gave it to Bell and Al, and they were number one in the business segment right. that was all Rico. But at some point you look at how we're doing, you go, hey, I got I can't really be out there with this product. Because the size of the market doesn't support what we're doing, right? White format's a great dear to heart part of that, right? You know, but the <laughs> if you look at white format and where it went, well. You know, the white, and even though there's some people who focus nothing on but white format, uh, let's just call it construction engineering architect, monochrome, that, that crash of 2008 just decimated printing out a large one for your, for your monochrome basic stuff. Graphic side has always been out there. So right. All, all kinds of options. Um, but it really hit, it took a hit. And so, so when people ask, ask me, why does Rico not have a full line of monochrome output device? I'm like, well, when you analyze the market, it's so niche now that you can't make a business model. So we let somebody else do it. Yeah, I don't know. I've uh, I've uh, cut my teeth on uh, wide format, um, yeah, just... especially in the AEC industry. Yep. Uh, and I'm still selling, um, let's see, uh, seven-year-old MP6700. No kidding. Yeah. Um, well, 6700 is the technology. 6700 is all we got. Seven years yeah, old, right. It's, yeah. it's the technology yeah. seven years old, but, you know, I, uh, fortunately, you can still get them new. Um, I sell uh, quite a bit of the kip uh, and uh, uh, monochrome, and basically, we've been doing very well with the new kip color laser 700 series. Yeah. I mean, so that's, you know, some of those things, like, so I always, you know, I'm doing... AC and all that part of that today. And, you know, well, when it was strong, it was everybody was growing their bar, their products, and everybody had to expand their product line for the wide format. As we, and we, it has different names, right? But large format. So that, the AC guys call it large format, right? You're like going, so, you know, we got eight and a half by 11, we got 11 by 17 tabloid, we got 24 by 36, you know, da, 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 all these sizes. But when, when I went to work for Arc Document Solutions, which is only focused on architecture, yep. uh, they actually have the top 50 firms in the world or their customers. They don't use the word white woman. It's large woman. What? So so it's weird. But uh those biggest firms don't print anymore. They do everything I was I was in Minnesota at one of their construction sites with one of these big guys, top fifty in the world. And this is in two thousand eleven. And they had this huge steel box on the floor, the building they're building, right? And that steel huge box was like a sixty inch Act integrated uh, touchscreen model. They literally were doing the floor plan changes on a screen. Oh, 2011. So I think you go analyze the biggest, you know, against the, the advanced kids and architects worldwide. They were making those investments in 2011 to get yeah. out because 
you know, carrying plans around, going here and there with just like, hey, once you mark them up, they're wrong. If you're getting them up on the 30th floor, stuff gets on them. So they were literally building these steel cage boxes so they could put technology on site and they could do the mock-ups. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, but it's but, but niches. Every place is different. You know, those guys still want to do it that way. God love them. We got a guy in Alabama that still serves as type Take Pick your points. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, Greg, but they, people come from miles around to have this guy put that uh, T key back into that IBM. Oh, the IBM, on. like the Selectric and things like that? It goes from those, yeah, like just fix it. It just fix my typewriter. Like, really? They're like, yeah, because people pay for that. But I think it's always keep in mind. So every every marketplace can be a little different, but the overall trend of technology tends to win out over time. Right? Typewriters are going to pay out to devices. The right. data, um, it's not so growing. <laughs> so, Joe, you realize, uh, you know, um, um, I think two weeks ago, Xerox had a press release on their new MFPs with uh, AI. Did you catch that at all? You're going to talk to the machine and does stuff for you. Now, the machine's going to have uh, embedded uh, embedded uh, uh, work. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to, it's going to AI. Artificial and Session, uh, yeah, artificial intelligence uh, you know, using cool. to create workflows. That's cool. I, I, you know, I think everybody will have that at some point because it's not going to be a mechanical improvement. Uh, but you know, I was with Xerox 2013, 2016. You know, they had packaged up an app that was for translation. Translation app was available in 2013. Now, how many people engage? Not many. Voice activation of your copier. Talk to the copier to do things. Yeah. It didn't go well. It's, it's, it's not right. going to, no. Well, but we keep trying, right? So now the idea that, well, the users don't have to understand workflow, the IT guys don't have to understand workflow. Nobody has to understand the workflow. AI is going to step in and figure out your workflow based on some instructions and take care of all that behind the scenes without anybody being involved. I, I think it'll get there, but I, I don't know. I mean, is it going to, is it going to, Therefore, say I need that platform. What's the platform doing for me? Well, it's scanning documents. That's about it, right? Because well, the the whole idea. I mean, this was going to threaten the EDM and the BPO and the all the software that's out there right now that does that, right? What is the big one? The, um, I always say DocuWare, and that's not. What's the big workflow one? Software. DocuWare. Dockware is one of the leaders in the. So I was on a project with Dockware. Yeah, that's a, a storage one. This one was a digital workflow system, right? So it it consumed hard data, whether it was faxed, printed, telephone, voicemail, didn't matter what it was. It came in and based on a bunch of rules, it would send it to the right place, right? But you had yeah. to program it. Yeah, you think? I mean, that's gonna. I think everybody. I mean, it's which. AI won't you you won't have to do it with AI if you're if you well, yeah, truly yeah. have AI built in, you it'll teach, know you have to teach your AI model but you, you want to learn. Right? right, 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 right. But right now you have to teach the model it's not AI, it's machine language every for every single client. Right. Well, I will I will say this, I mean and, and it's you know, if we look at our world, right? You know, Greg, you talk about it, you you learn our down going down the path of future, you always do. You know, AI, artificial intelligence, or whatever you want to call it, um, is the future of all things. Okay. Uh, as as we would have said, hey, the internet in 2000, 2000 the internet became more of an end user web based uh, system that was like, wow, okay. And now that's kind of ho hum, and AI becomes the next thing. But in all that, there's output, right? A lot of people in this, you know, that definitely part of PFP and my followers of my people I know, I'm still in the output business, right? I'm tied to that hardware. And I would tell you that all the software, the workflow, all that, you don't need hardware. There's, there's no hardware. It's, it, the output is coming oh, out oh. in the system. So then if the output's all digital and the, the input, throughput, and output is totally 100% digital, then of course AI is going to be able to take that access to that and listen to the instructions and do something. So where's that it just says, well, yeah, that, that one day occurs, and then you can quit cutting down trees because we're not going to use paper because it's all digital. And AI will be able 
part of that. You know, Rico's uh, he just got an update. You know, Rico has internalized what we're going to do with AI at different levels. Uh, that'll come to market. I don't know. You know, if you got a platform, right? It includes functionality of copy, print, scan, fax, bills. That's boring. What are you going to put on? What do you make that? Why would anybody buy one of those? What's the platform? What's the need? Well, if I can today say I've got a module that does current technology cool stuff, maybe that enables that platform. Okay. But, you know, like I said, we've all had voice activation, your know, voice, talk to it. We've all had language translation. When you look at the results of the sales of adoption by the users on that platform, it's not high enough to make it go. So I think Xerox has to do what they need to do to keep their platform sexy. Um, it, it, if it was public information, we could say how much of that happened. Sizzle. Right? How much, and, and yeah, sizzle. It's the, it's the old sizzle, right? Give me a new, oh, I got to have a new model name. Ooh, can you make the covers a different color? I mean, I just had a conversation about, you know, if the covers were a different color, that would be exciting. Come on, guys. Do they need the core functionality that we're selling? Are we solving a problem? What's the problem? You know, if the problem is solved by something, we're going to sell it. If we can't define the problem and we don't have anything to solve the problem, we ain't selling something. Okay? It's all solution selling, consultant selling. And, uh, you know, the, the software mm -hmm. world is, it's all, that, that's a different world. So AI is really going to be on gangbusters where I, I believe anybody is so poor part of the process. It'd be like us talking about the processing on these notebook computer terms. We're not talking about the, the Intel inside it, or we're not talking about what we're doing inside these products, these platforms to process. Why? It's boring. AI will be nothing more behind the scenes. You know, you talk, it happens. And where well, that's, things. yeah, that's, that's the way to look at it. Seriously. I mean, it'd be just like electricity or fire yeah. or something, you know, yeah. that now no one even thinks of until it's gone. Right. Until it's, like it's cut out. Help. The average average person in the United States does not think about the internet or the nope. web, world wide web or why it even existed. We're at the point now where if you had an emergency and you really need to use that core backbone to communicate, no one would know how to do it. Right. They wouldn't know how to say, let's establish a connection and let's send a text code to that guy because I've got his address. The thing it was created to do, right? When all the only the cockroaches and a few guys in bunkers are existing. They could talk to each other around the world through this crazy thing called the internet. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like when the telegraph came in, no one knew how to light smoke fires or, you know, send up smoke signals anymore. Right. right. And, right. and, you know, when the lighter, no one knows how to rub two sticks together and make fire or to carry a, a charcoal around in their yeah. wagon all day because they needed a fire at night. That the, didn't. The survival skills, they call it, right? But, well, but that's, yeah. that's the cool, cushy part of being in technology. So all these cool things happen. And I'll say this because I'm just going off an angle that we get back to whatever you guys want to. But, you know, I had some conversations with some people, and I've had them now for the last 10 years, where there's an assumption. The assumption is if you're dealing with a 30-year-old person in the United States, they understand technology because they grew up with it. That'd be like saying that I know how to build an engine in a car because I drove one at 15. They don't. It's not intuitive. And thirty year olds and thirty year olds and below do not know how to what's going on with the technology. They know how to use it. No different than I know how to drive a Monte Carlo, but I couldn't put the engine together. I couldn't put the brakes on. I didn't know how to. You know, I, I do how to use them, but I didn't know what was going on. And today we have people who are using technology, they have no clue. I'll give you a real simple, right? Because we have Rick Lambert's going to join me and help me out with some some of my folks. We don't. We have people, and he admitted on one of his posts this recently. People who don't know how to do posts on LinkedIn can't figure out how to like something on LinkedIn. This is okay. So, wow. And I'm talking about 24 year olds don't know how to do it. We assume they use this technology, and the problem is somebody has to educate people on how to do things. Well, that tells me something really interesting, Joe. And it's the second time I've heard that they don't know it because they don't need to know it. Do They've they? never wanted to know. It. And now we, we being the older generation, are forcing them to use something that we use that they've never needed to use because we see value in it that may not even be there. I just I, I, yeah, I just I came upon I, that. It's like, okay. Yeah, I, think, I think you're right on the on the societal 
trends. Well, everything's society. And I mean, right. it's like, right, I used to be able to set the timing in my car. You guys probably knew how to do all that crap, right? Yeah. Change the spark plugs, uh, change the oil. Used to do all, put, the, put on brake pads, but I don't need tires. to now. Change, change a tire. tire. Change now that you might need to know, but now they've got run flats. Who needs to know that? Or roadside assistance. If you want to get you. real goofy, it's like, yeah, but I don't, now I, I, up until just a minute ago, I would see the value of teaching someone how to use this technology, but I'm now I'm questioning why they don't they don't need to know it already. They got through life this far without learning well, learning how what, to. That, and that then, may be the that may be the kicker on the trend is like so if you get to age thirty and you really don't know what's happening behind the scenes, you just know you press the button to get a goodie. Do you need what, it? Well, Pavlo's theory says you don't. You teach the you dogs don't. and the monkeys. Press this button, I'll give you a reward. Now, what if I don't? What if I want to understand like something on my own? Just shut up and press the button. And get well, you can do that on your own, sure. And and you know, but do you really need to? There's a lot of other things in the world you can do on your own too now because of all this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's up some time. I don't know. It's, it's a big hmm. question. Our smile this goes like, so how in the hell am I going to use a copier? Well, I will tell you what, yeah. not. they're not going to go to the office. If you don't need to know, that means you don't need to know because you're not using it. Hey, there um, you go. yeah, uh, uh, you know, bring us back art. Bring us back art. A lot of the salespeople uh, I know that are selling technology. Yeah, they don't know. They have no clue how that technology works. Well, that's well, fine. That's good. And what? But I will say that so then sell side. If you if if you um, you're using something and you're using it to make money. And you have no clue how it works. You are totally dependent on that process for yeah. whoever owns it. Whoever owns it, right? Because they right. can take it away from you in the cloud in a heartbeat, and you're going like, I was making ten thousand dollars a month. What happened? Well, I changed yeah, it and I'm not paying a fee. So there, it's still capitalism. Let's assume that the United States will remain a capitalist country for a while. Uh, in capitalism, somebody pays for the means to access to resources. Zero sum. There's nothing free in the United States today. Now, I could change that, flip it, and say, well, now I'm going to have like, you know, 10 guys that own all the resources in the U.S., and I'll allocate it based on whether I like Greg Walters or not. Greg, you can use the Internet because I'm going to give you access. I don't like you. You don't have access, Greg. And if Greg doesn't know how to get around that, didn't have any clue how it all worked, you just stop. That's more of a future society, what do they call that some kind of society where they think it's going to be a utopian. dystopian or utopian? No, uh, dystopia, dystopia or utopia. Yeah, yeah. The utopian world, which is pretty much in the Star Trek series, which I like Star Trek. Uh, you know, utopia is everybody loves each other. There's no war. There's no allocation of resources. We just share everything free. Man, then, but yet they have the Ferengi on the show, okay? Ferengi are like bartering for everything, right? And they're the nasty people because they're still making money. But, you know, we have a U.S. mentality based on capitalism that, yeah, if, if, if everybody has access to certain things, they don't need to understand it. But if it's controlled by one person who says, and then we've seen some examples of this, hey, I don't like what you're saying. This has always been doable. I don't like what you're saying over this usage of this, I don't know, TikTok, or Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever platform you know how to use but don't understand it. I can just edit it. It's going through a server somewhere. I remember IRC chat rooms and found out that everything you type, some dude sitting in a server that's part of the system, the internet, watching everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. Forge what he wants, deletes what he wants, shuts you down what he wants. And that was kind of, I had that live experience one. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is the internet. This is one computer logging in directly with another computer with nobody supposedly able to control that access. And if it's free, I get that. Right. But they're all used, but don't understand. There's a guy behind the scenes that says, Do you understand why you need it? No. Are you paying for it? No. You don't you don't get that in. <laughs> you know, so we're coming, you know, it's it's weird, right? It's like uh, output, long term output in our lifetime. You don't know why you need it. Unless you need to prove that that was your money in the bank. You can prove something existed if you have no physical record of what exists. Uh, good question, right? So I think there needs to be some output to just say, digitally, I think I had a million dollars in your bank, and I don't really trust that your computer is keeping up with my money. 
that's a fiat thing, but you know, you never had a million dollars in the bank. I access to it. I've literally had that people, either. I've, I've literally had people tell my parents, you don't need to balance the checkbook. You don't need to ask us to balance because whatever the computer says, what you have in our account. That's it. Yeah. If you're going to balance your checkbook the old way, what if it's wrong? What if you're wrong? You're you're all wrong. <laughs> now something, yes, now something in writing, you're not going to get back to your funds. And you're still wrong. Then. You're still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so yeah. la la last week we had a chat about, um, we were talking about uh, AI, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, chat GBT, uh, perplexity, um, yeah. um, writing blogs, right? Told you I was writing some new blogs. So this week um, I took a little bit different spin because I had to create some blogs. Because okay. I, I'm, I'm prospecting, right? Either by phone or I do prospect by phone every now and then, uh, right. but email. Uh, but I had some people that, um, um, not an objection, but a comment, right, um, about um, why we don't need a piece of equipment or something like that. And I was writing articles and posting them on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and then sending the client the link saying, Hey, you may be interested in this article I just published on LinkedIn, right? So I was doing that with ChatGBT, and I go, yeah. "Well, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I can make this a little bit better, right?" Because then I went into perplexity, mm -hmm. and I and I told it to write the same blog. Mm -hmm. Of course, it wasn't identical. There was a difference, right? So I go, "Wait a minute, there's certain parts of perplexity that I like." Yep. And certain parts of chat GBT that I liked for this blog. And this week on two of my blogs, I actually merged both content from GBT and perplexity and then changed a few things to make it my own, which, yeah. which I thought was, uh, I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Well, that's perfect art. That's perfect. That's that's the way to use it, right? Because you're actually using it. It's not using you. You're using the AI in the sky. They all, and especially if you put pit them all against each other. Like perplexity is really good for web searches. Meta, you, you know, Meta's free. So yeah. give that a shot. And then what I, I so I give all three of them the same prompt, right? And you can get better at it or not. And then take the content, mix it all together, and then put that back in and say, hey, make this sound better. Right. And see what it does, but or, you know it's funny. Well, that's great. So, what else are? How did it end up? Um, how did it end up? Um, so that was all um, content I wrote last week. Okay, and I sent it to probably half a dozen clients. Uh, and this week will be follow up, pretty much follow up week, right? Yep. So. So I'll be following up. Hey, did you get a chance to read that article? Did you have any thoughts about it? Um, and of course, that will start off the conversation and see where we're going to go. Right? You know what? Here's an interesting thing you might want to try just to put this into your fertile mind is take that content, that blog, and then ask one of the LLMs, you know, say, hey, listen, I want this to go to this particular prospect that has this particular characteristics, right? And then ask it. What do you think I should change or evolve or look out for if I want to secure an appointment with this prospect and so see what comes about back? The, you're talking about actually the company name? No, no, no. You can, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. It just you, you do a quick or profile. The industry. Industry or that specific yeah. profile, right? Yeah, so if you're yeah, aiming it at someone, say, listen, I'm aiming this at this company, ABC Manufacturing. They've got 15 employees, three machines, you know, roughly this, that, and the other thing. This right. is the content I want to send to them. What should I change about this content? And then what should my next steps be? Or something goofy like that, right? And see what it says. Yeah. Right. So bounce, it, bounce the actual, you know, because what's your ultimate intention of this particular thing? It's to get an appointment. Right. Absolutely. So boom, boom, boom. Say, listen, this is what I want to send to them. And, the, in, you know, you can even get this is the prompting stuff. Right. You can even get more complicated. Say, this is the company. I want to send this to them. What should I do? What should my next steps be? 
what should I be looking out for, et cetera, et cetera, and see what comes back. And they'll get, it's like bouncing it off a, an expert in the industry, right? right? See what happens. That Because that's what I'm seeing other companies do with AI and a, you know, a higher you know, corporate sales, B2B sales, is they're, they're creating a whole strategic sales-based prompt. Right. Drill and, it. Yeah. Drill you know, it with, down. With everything, though, here's my, co- not the name, but here's the company. Here are who I'm meeting with. Here's their website. This is what I, you know, this is what I'm selling. Where do I match what they're looking for? How should I position that? What should I say? And they're asking the LLM. And all of a sudden, it comes back with this whole strategic sales approach because it knows strategic sales. It knows, you know, thriving on chaos. It knows all the books that we've ever read or haven't read about selling. Right. So it uses that shit. And, you know, that's the next and the real step of, of an LLM and AI. Writing these emails and that, yeah, that's easy stuff. Okay, now what do you want to do with it? And then can the AI help me with that? And so, I mean, it's not really what you asked, Art, but I'm telling you, I've, I've, this is what the bigger companies are using AI and sales for, that kind of stuff. Right. Interesting. Good information. I'm probably uh, going to add a couple extra prompts next Play week and, and just see what i just see what i end up with yeah. it'll be interesting to see what i end up with i yeah. think that's I mean, cool sometimes you never know right so so the last blog i lo- wrote was uh i don't think anybody's ever written about this in the industry was understanding no parts assured in the copier industry i saw that and i don't know what it means so you don't have to explain it to me but i'll right. read it and find out yeah but no parts assured Correct. The heck you say? Yeah, I never heard of it before. I've only been doing this since '91. No parts ush- with an A or A. Oh, a- yeah. Assured. Right. Assured. Okay. Assured. I'm I'm looking at it right now, Art. So, so wait, you, some used copy guy who's like, "Hey, the parts won't break." No, no. Strength. Basically, no. basically, uh, uh, manufacturers, all copier manufacturers, will put out a list of how long their parts are good for. Yeah, yeah. And if they're if they're no longer assured, okay. you know we can't uh, yeah. guarantee we can't guarantee yeah. parts after X amount of time. Yeah, yeah. end a, of life. That's, a, that's yep. a deep detail that usually the government contracts correct. Require. So, it's been required. I mean, so <laughs> Joe, Joe, what, what you what you made a statement earlier? You made the statement about you know customers are looking to buy their older machines. Right. Customers are keeping machines longer than they really should be keeping machines. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what this blog was to try and give some insight to, to people that that your copiers aren't going to, sooner yeah, or I mean, later, we're not going to be able to get parts. Well, right. I think it, it, it is, you know, that opens up and, you know, I, me and you and Greg have never sat around and talked to them. Obviously, Art, I've been watching you for, from afar for long. And all of the guys I respect are, you know, hey, have you seen P P for P? And I'm like, what the P for P? So you've always been there. So I'm not going to, you know, I, I respect everything you've done. But here's the challenge. And Greg's Greg's ahead of us, right? Greg's going to the next. He's Greg's moved to the new area. He's on Mars, right? So Greg's gone to Mars and he's telling us what it's like in Mars. And he's like, yeah, come on. Um, but if you if you back out of this and say, I don't work for a manufacturer, I'm not relying on this hardware platform to exist. He said, how does it make sense? It does. So what, what some people are doing, especially with the younger kids coming up saying, I don't even print. I don't copy. I don't print. I don't fax. And I'm not sure why you want me to scheme. They just don't. It's like, if you tell me that's part of the function of this job, I'm kind of getting away from you. Because our generation and lots of generations grew up with the copy mice, right? That in every movie, there's a copier in this office. So we're kind of see it as part of reality at, our, at, at age 50 or 60. It's like, yep, yep, I get it. But the kids coming up are going to be like, that's an anti, I don't want to be around you, right? And so as the decision makers start saying, you know, we looked at our print volume, we looked at our usage, we looked at our workers, having a big copy center, a copy room, break room with a copier, not really a draw because they're not doing that. Either. So they're going to make that machine last as long as it needs to last or they don't need it. And I think we're all still stuck in the, so what's our next upgrade? I don't think there's the next upgrade. I mean, you got to remember, let's look at Rico's strategy for 2019. 
Okay, this is all documented, all the launch kits of 2019. When we launched the IM technology, intelligent machine or intelligent MFP, whatever you'll call it, we made the statement in all the launch materials. You'll never this is need the last, another copy machine. This is the last platform you'll ever need. And yep. then we launched a thing called Always Current Technology so that we could make sure the platform was running software that could talk to the cloud of the current state in the future years to do the applications that make this a digital on and off rate. Now, how long did that last? Well, it lasted until all the dealers say, hey, how do I sell the next, how do I keep the platform out there working? Right. If it's got the same model on it. Right. And I just cringe, right? I've been doing this too long in the product side. Like, I cringe. It's like, why can't you sell what the machine's doing? Where's the I software and apps that you, well, what, what have you built around the platform since 2019? And it's not a lot. So it's like, so really, they don't need the platform. But if it's the cool, new, shiny thing, and there's people that want the new model, right? Hey, I got some, there's people I knew, a couple of reps, guys, that were making good money. They got a new car every year. Right. Did he need a new car? No, he just liked having a new car. So, Every well, year he, got he just did. He rolled into cars. Every 12 months, the dude got another car. And I'm like, that's cool. But hmm, I wasn't running a business that way. Well, Apple fans, the Apple cult, they upgraded to the next Apple device and get in line and pay a premium to get it. Why? Huh? There's some behaviors that might want the next model. But as in our business, if we're deep in it, I'm trying to solve problems. Do I need a new model, a new model number? Do I need, what feature set, what am I needing that dictates a new box? That's, that's, the, that's the reason why we need to bring AI into all of these devices. But AI is going to be all around it and say, basically, you don't need the platform. Yep, that's what's going to happen. Say, AI, AI, I understand that will happen sometime in the future, but it isn't well, it's happening. Like next year. It's not happening now. It's... You better talk to Greg. Greg, if I said, Greg, tell me about, you know, since last November when this start, when chat GPT 4.0 was announced to the world that it existed, or 3.0, right? It's 3.0 and everybody in November 2023 is like, wow, what's this new thing? Well, it's on version 3.0, folks. It's not new. But Five's going to be around. It, yeah, it, I mean. It, it's accelerating at such a rate that AI today is, hey, you can create an AI alternative, right? That's yep. the new, that's kidding with you, right? You just create an AI alternative. It's me. It's going to look like me. It's going to talk like me. It's going to do everything I ever knew. It's going to sound like me. It's going to have all, and I'm just going to put him out there to do work for him. So there's the real Joe Bargainer. And then there's the AI Joe Bargainer, which this is reality today on many social platforms. That was like, really? So I think what I'm saying is that if you get into digital technology, hard copy, scanning, print, fax, it, it, it doesn't apply because it's moved. The computer systems, you know, AI has moved beyond that, right? It's going to speak it to you. It's going to give you a video of it. It's going to get an interactive digital experience. What's the output, which I love, right? What's that piece of paper got to do with it? It's, well, it so that's hard to accept if you're, you're providing nothing but uh, marks on paper. If all you do is provide marks on paper, you've got the right technology. Figure out how to make it part of something else so you can make a living servicing the workflow of the documentation of digitization of workflow, which is going to will ultimately include AI if you're still in business because AI is going to replace a lot of things we do. I think if you look at what's happening, right, the, 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 the tip of the spear right now with AI is in the creative industries, which is journalism, movies, Hollywood. If you look what's going on in those industries and we aren't, a lot of people aren't, they are losing people at 15,000, 20,000, just slash and burn. And that's because these, these media companies don't need a staff of 12 animators. They just need 12 new computers to handle this. You're seeing it already. Well, you just said Joe is, is only six months old and now they've got people. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's, I, and I've been teasing people for a long time. Go, yeah, yeah, it's computer generated video. It doesn't look like, it, you know, I can tell, I can tell. And now, not more than 30 days ago, I'm going, okay, that's pretty good. The hand, look at the hands, look at the eyes, and you can tell. And then those were stills. And in 30 days, there are videos now of completely, totally generated from a prompt. Yeah, there was totally. There was one on, was one on LinkedIn just yesterday that's yep. like, take two images and tell it to merge them like they're hugging. It's like, so yep. I guess what I'm saying, Art, is, I mean, you know, obviously, I love this industry. I didn't, like, 
What I'm saying is a lot of people love the film industry. A lot of people made a lot of money from that, from lighting, from costumes, from sets, from, you know, all that stuff. They're gone. It's changing. And I would tell you that uh, there'll always be somebody somewhere that won't charge them. Okay. Well, yeah. As long as, as, long as they don't ban paper, people are going to do it. Now, all that means is like we talked about volume earlier. Page volume overall is, is the overall page volume usage of paper in the United States General Office. It's been on decline since 1994. I was tracking it. And everybody's like, well, Joe, yes. What do you mean? Well, and the 2% drop on trillions and trillions of pages. So if you do, you do the math, it's like any math. It's like, well, if you it's just drop lot. 2% every year, it never ends, right? It's, it's an infinity. It, it's infinity, right? Yeah. It's just dropping 2% year over year. But we've had two big hits. It's going to be minimal. So that just means really easy. We all know this. Less people to support a smaller market. So if you can be the strongest in the group and figure out ways to be relevant, there's always going to be some people they're going to provide a service for something that's on the lagger standpoint of going out of business. They're always yeah. people. It's just, there's not growth for new people to come in and say, Hey, the pie is a hundred today. It's going to be 120 next year. Nope. Pie is a hundred today. It's going to be 80 next year. And the next year is going to be 60 or 70. And so you got to fight harder to get your fair share of that business. And then the question becomes, what business is it? How do you define yourself and what problems are you trying to solve? AI is going to take a lot of the, sizzle away from everybody i don't care if zarks puts it on the box we're all going to have it built in the box but i don't care what the processor is and i don't care what the code is in the machine we used to care in 1991 we get excited about the million lines of code that do postscript printing I don't care like greg said i just want to work i want to get what i want out of it so i think it's going to be challenging for our current providers to continue to just what am i doing who am i servicing how do I make money doing it and define it? And and I think AI is just behind the scenes taking away some of the easy, low hanging stuff that we used to do, right? It's like, well, I can dispatch your service call. Dude, the machine's fixed the problem. What do you mean? We've enabled AI on the machine. The machine already knows the problem. It's notified. It's physical. Somebody's going to show up. Like it's something about right. the settings. It's going to adjust the settings. What? what do you mean it's going to adjust the settings? Where's the person involved? No yeah. person. Name a person. So yeah, it's almost like how, uh, you know, office space, right? <laughs> you know, you used to have people, look at all the maids, right? People who, or people who would go in and water the plants. That was an industry. Don't need that anymore. Don't need someone, the cleaning crew, to come in every Thursday night and do floors 3 through 10, and then Wednesday night they do floors 10 through 15. They, you don't need that anymore. So, and that, yeah. Everything yeah, changes. It, it isn't no, automated. Right. It's gone. <laughs> you know, I just wish I had been a, a, a laborer. I'd have got to tell me about you sitting next to a guy one time. He's, oh, he's up north. He's a New Yorker. He's a Brooklyn guy. So this Brooklyn mm -hmm. guy is like 70. He's like sitting next to me. He's a nice guy. He starts talking. He's like, I'm just a laborer. I've only been a laborer. I'm like, going, I, that term is like, what's he talking about? So basically, what he's saying is, I'm a high school. I did, may not have graduated high school. He says, I just started working in construction in Brooklyn when I was a kid with my brothers. So, so now I'm multi million. So mm. we just kept working. So mm -hmm. you could make a good living as a worker. So what's that? Carpenter, a plumber, the trades, a Christian, a welder. These jobs will always exist because the infrastructure AI has to get a well, Greg, you ain't gonna go from point A to point B without some dude pouring some concrete and clearing out some stuff. Yeah, you AI, are. And you're not gonna go to the toilet. AI is not gonna clear out the fact that you gotta get the shit from point A to point B. That Already got AI. it. Yeah, that's right. You're digital. This is not the real Greg because he thinks. It's I'm telling you, they've already got the, the robots in Japan that'll clear the clean the toilets. They've already got big, huge robots that will pour the cement. They've got BMW oh, has rolled out robots that are building BMWs, walking around. Uh, what was it? Amazon bought 50,000 robots. You know, I love robots, right? And robots with AI are basically dead, Mr. Data, and that's coming. I don't agree, disagree. But the infrastructure in which the robots roll, they're not there yet because the big, the big heavy stuff, is still a guy or gal, and that's so that you know, even in the there'll future, be there'll be one guy be... who can manage a hundred robots versus a hundred yeah, guys. Go, yeah, but right. at least he's got a job. What's the guys that do nothing going to do? But won't these robots need to be fixed? Other robots that's, will fix them. Well, most well, most things, other robots will fix them. Well, they can create their own part. Yep. 
I'm, they're all I'm telling you, I'm seeing it. It's just nuts. It is, you know, right. It's not in mainstream yet, but it no, doesn't take long for the mainstream to get that, for it to be in the main. That's one thing I've learned in the last 12 months. Yeah. If you see it in a research project, by the time yeah. we see it, someone's it's already, already doing it somewhere. That's the, I, that's the it, early that's the early press release art. They let they leak, leak the little thing. It's like just to let you know, invisibility cloak. Dude, that's done. Done. And it's I've seen done. it. How about this? The bird robots. You've heard about this? A year ago, it was a conspiracy theory that, oh, yeah, birds. Insect? No, insect yeah. robots. Five well, no, but insects. China just released the bird robots. They look like freaking pigeons flying through the air. They probably yeah. had them for a decade. The little insect robots the CIA's had forever. Well, let's, let, let's not go down that little rabbit hole we love. It's right? not a rabbit hole. It's I'm, huge, I'm, and it's here. It's like, what I'm saying is when you look at general office, right, it's somebody like general office, college educated, high school educated, people oh. who are pushing paper around, pushing transactions around, pushing stuff around. Do I need them? Nope. I don't need people to do transactions. Hmm. Now we're seeing it. And what's interesting to me is pandemic policies allowed certain things to move to a new level, but then they've stopped. Okay. They've stopped. I've seen some remodeling of restaurants that they've announced. You see the releases of the auto fully automated, no humans present fast food, tested, but stopped. They haven't released the Kraken yet for some reason. Like going, huh. Well, you, you tested it. You know it works. Japan's been doing this kind of stuff for 30 years. Right? If you want to eat food in Japan, you go to a little box, you put your money in, you press the computer, it goes in, pulls a ready-made meal out, and you eat it. Sushi, fresh sushi out of a vending machine. That was 1980 in Japan. Right? So that's not cool. You're American. I don't like that. But the technology that automation, robotics, AI brings is it's here. Why it's not implemented on a mass scale, I would say it's more of a the U.S. population is not ready for it, right? We released the Japan, uh, Chinese released their dogs during the pandemic. So they could patrol areas and report and do whatever they wanted to with a physical entity that was monitoring people. Okay? Still did electronically, but there was a physical presence. They gave the Chinese gave and offered, offered and gave to the New York Police Department. Yep. A group of them. Towards the end of the pandemic, the New York Police Department tried to use them. They didn't use the pub, them. The public outrage was like, what are you doing? So they stopped. Now, they still got the dogs. They're still in the next generation. They're just not implementing for some reason. I don't know why they're not using it, except they're waiting for the right atmosphere so people don't throw a fit. You know, get you used to it, right? We got, I got to get used to the fact that you don't know what's on that. They, nobody really knows if what we're doing today is really us or 100% AI manufactured. You really don't know. There's no way to prove it. I know it's you guys. I could probably ask you a few questions that we haven't publicly talked about. But once the population in the U.S. is comfortable with the robot and the 100% automation of the car and the restaurant, the delivery. Remember, look at all the deliveries were delivered to your house. Right, we're still, drones are ready to go. The FD, FTC, what FAA has approved the routes yep. to Amazon to drop ship via drone to your house. Yep. Why have they? Why have they done it? They are. Well, a little bit. I mean, I'm talking about like no more truck. Just go ahead, you know, package under X pounds just comes to your door on a drone. There, the users have to be comfortable that a drone just flew to my house and dropped off something at the driveway. Right now, if you're in the South, Bubba's going to take a 12 gauge shotgun. They shoot the drone out of the air. Mm -hmm. You really ain't gonna, you can't prosecute him. It's on his property. So that's not really, that's not compliance yet, right? That's like shooting the Amazon guy that drops, shows up on your doorstep to drop off the box. Can't do that. I'm, I'm used to the guy coming to the door, right? I'm used to doorbell video, right? I gotta get the technology to the point that the average person is comfortable engaging it before I go 100% mass production. Yeah. And we're done. But it's gonna turn, Greg, it's, it's gonna turn in some event it's going to turn as a necessity and everybody's going to be like, wow, we're here. Yeah. I, I'm just, you know, I don't like it, but yeah, I'm getting ready. I did a, I did a post about it. I got to get ready that if I want a McDonald's hamburger, I'm going to have ordered it on an app before I ever got to that drop off point. Pickle Absolutely. Pickle. Yeah. We and do it already. Yep. Shake Shack is got the, I uh, I don't like yeah. it though. I don't like it. I don't like well, it. you're old Joe. So that's well, there's, there's, that's why it's keeping to be a lagger because in business, there's, most people that are running all the small business SMBs in the country. That's small businesses. They're, they're yeah. over they're over ten years old and making money and doing stuff. 
it's a lot of guys that can fit there. Mm-hmm. It just is, right? The guys, no, no, it not, is. The young guys are not coming, young guys and girls are not coming out saying, you know what I want to do? I'm going to open a dry cleaning service. No, they're not. <laughs> they don't need, listen, the clothes we're wearing nowadays, you don't need a dry cleaner or a laundry cleaner. Wrinkles good. Yep. So, How about this? You won't ever need a delivery service for anything. Because a drone? You, mean? you don't need drones. I don't get I'll leave stuff. it at that. I don't get this stuff at my house. The replicator? Yes. Oh, replicator. That's interesting. You know the replicators are done. We just hadn't seen them again, right? That's like, but at the end of the day, all this great technology, just remember at the end of the day, sent two astronauts or two people on a new delivery system to the space station, right? That's all the news. And unfortunately, the new delivery system that's supposed to also be the come home system is broke. And there is debate right now that they went up there for two weeks. It'll be home in 12 weeks. There's a ton of reasons for that, but that's yeah, a know, whole nother three I, hours worth of discussion. I know, but it's not always there yet. So, yeah, I know we're going to go to Mars one day. Jap- the Chinese have a space station they're building already. It's laid out. It's planned. You got to, you know, you got to send this stuff up there slowly and build this monster thing. But right now, we can't get a guy up there and back for life. I don't know what, you know, the challenge. Musk can do it. Well, even he's had his challenge. Musk has done it. Musk can do it. Everybody has done it once, but consistently to the point that the masses could get on a ship. I mean, you could jump on a thing and say, let's go for a little fight. We'll be back in a week. Nope. They'll never be able to get an airplane to go from L.A. to Japan. How about just the ladder, the staircase? Uh, uh, Electromagnetic staircase. They'll, they'll staircase. never uh, replace uh, the horses. <laughs> they'll, they'll never replace the horse. All right, Art. On, on Take that, us out. On Art, that, save us, Art. Um, you know, we spoke about uh, AI in depth, and uh, we don't know basically what's AI and, you know, what's real or what's... I do, Art. Real. Just listen to me. I, Greg, I'm, Greg I'm just going to go back point. to the 1980s and have <laughs> us all think about Max oh, Headroom. Back to the 80s. That's right. Max Headroom, I'm going to watch uh, Escape right. from L.A. <laughs> right. I, I highly recommend the new uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, jeez. Thank you. Threw it up. I watched it on the plane. It was really cool. Hey, Wi-Fi on the plane. I could watch a movie that I never would have seen. Never. And, gonna, uh, that'll never I, work. I recommend that you watch it because they didn't screw it up, best I can tell. Uh, I think it's just a made-up story in between. But I'm pretty much sure the majority of everything you saw on that screen was beyond CGI. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, 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 the characters look so real. Beyond, it's just nice. amazing. So... Yes. I don't know, or do the apes actually talk nowadays? Because I saw a bunch of them acting in that movie, and I just don't know. I ain't met the dude yet, but you couldn't have told me they weren't real. And that's really wild, right? Big yes, problem. it is. Hey, Joe, thank you very much for your time. Well, well I, I didn't get to my topics, but we had a good time. Well, you can always come back next time and get your topics. No. Yeah, if you want to try and keep on target. There you go. Great. I need, I need an outline. Art, Thanks, always guys. a pleasure. Good times. Uh, everyone, thank you, Art. Thanks for hey, tuning in. Roll Tide. Uh, please roll make time. sure you tune in next time, uh, every Friday, 4 p.m. Please remember to like, follow, and share. And we'll be back again next week. All right. Take it easy.